All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss, and we're looking at a fig today called Moro de Caneva. I've done a couple of reviews on this particular fig, and I've had it for a few years now, and I've really been excited for it over the years because it's just simply one of the best fig varieties, period. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. This is a review of this particular variety. This is a, I'm gonna try to sell you guys this variety. Some people accuse me of trying to pump up the price of particular varieties, but what I'm really trying to do is inspire you to grow this fig. I want you to have this fig. People don't seem to understand that. There's a nice little distinction. I personally believe that if there's something great in the world that is worth doing, worth growing, worth eating, some enjoyable experience, wouldn't you want to share that experience with people that you care about? And that's what I love to do. That's why I basically make these videos. I love figs. And um, the truth of the matter is, not enough people are educated on these fruits. And if we get to a certain number of people who know about figs, then everybody will know about figs. In the way that, let's say, the average person can know. You know, it kind of uh, expands outward from there. Just because one of your friends knows about it, or if one of your friend knows, knows about it, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so the real money maker of this particular variety can be very easily depicted by just simply observing the fruits. I can look at this particular fig right here and you can notice, look at the angle in which this fruit is hanging downwards. It has a very long stem and it also is very elongated and slender in shape so that when the, when the rains come in, the rain hits this particular fig and just sheds right off. And because the, the fig, the rain sheds right off of the fig, it doesn't split or it has a lot less of a tendency to split and that the eye of the fruit is very susceptible to splitting. That's typically where you see them split because that's the most tender spot on the fruit. So if you have a variety like this as an example, where the, the shape of the fruit is quite flat, right? It's the total opposite of the fruit we just looked at. And not only that, but the eye is pointing towards the sky so that when it rains, the, the rain hits the eye and actually expands that location. The water is absorbed into the skin of the fig and it expands. And when you have quick expansion of fruits, the fruits tend to split. So the, this fig doesn't absorb that water is my point, is that it doesn't absorb that water. The, the water is really almost never hitting the eye of the fruit as well. And you just have, because of that, the perfect situation for a fruit to actually avoid splitting, humid conditions, rainy conditions. And then of course, it's compounded by the fact that even if this fig were to split, even if the interior were to be exposed to the outside elements, it seems to really have some incredible spoiling mold fermentation resistance because it has such an amazing bricks. The bricks is high enough in the fruits that I actually was over here on my Campaneri tree. I actually have some dried fruits over there because Campaneri is quite similar. I don't want to go all the way over there and show you, but you can see it up in there is that I have a dried fruit right there because Campaneri is so incredible that even if it were to rain, even if it were to split, the interior is exposed to the outside elements, the bricks within this fruit is high enough to actually continue ripening without spoiling. And yeah, you, you're gonna have probably some critters and pests and different things that are more attracted to it, and that's unfortunate. But, you know, it's still an incredible quality that let's say it's split at an earlier time in its ripening period, well, you could just let it hang there for a bit. Let it continue to ripen. As long as there's not gonna be much more rain in the forecast, it'll continue to ripen without spoiling. And you'll have yourself a very high quality fig, a great eating experience. 
So that to me is the two major things about the fruit is that that separates it from all the others. You know, you could throw out the window everything else that I'm gonna say, although there are some important, important characteristics that we're gonna mention. Uh, but for the most part, I think that's where the money's made. I think those are the two most important things that anybody could have in a fruit um, from this particular variety. Now, there is also a hang time on this that's quite short. Just about three or four days ago, this was a fruit that would have been pretty much impenetrable. There wouldn't have been any critter damage. There would be no insect damage. There would be no rain damage. So this fruit really has a short hang time. And now it's basically starting to shrivel on the tree. It's extremely soft. You can tell right here by the neck the fruits are starting to get a wrinkled appearance. This is the time to pick it. And you know what else is that there's no cracking on this fruit. Absolutely zero cracking. There's no splitting. The eye is pretty much closed. This fruit is basically, it's just, it's basically perfect. Like I'm not kidding. Like if you, if I were to dream up a fruit that I could breed, put together all the characteristics that I wanted, it would basically be that. I mean, this is literally as good as it gets. So the other things I wanna mention is that this is two potted trees I have here, but they're very, very productive trees in that they pretty much put out, if you give them enough light, they pretty much put out a fruit on every node and at a very early date. So it is a productive fig. It's also an early fig in that this fruit will produce, you know, early to mid season, sometime in that window um, I don't exactly know when, and I apologize for that. I think personally it's more towards the mid-season than it is towards early, but it should ripen roughly around the same time as a hardy Chicago, which is an early variety. You have very early varieties, you have early varieties, and then you have mid-season varieties. This one's probably just simply an early variety. And you know what's great about this fruit? is that it's quite hardy as well. Not that I really grow these fruits or this particular fig unprotected, but it is one among the hardiest fig varieties that you could grow. Um, this was definitely proven to be hardy around five degrees Fahrenheit. So I think it could go even lower. I'm trialing it here as a hardiness experiment. But you can see this is a very young tree that I planted that was probably only four inches off the ground last year. It grew last year and now it grew this year and it has fruits all up and down the branches. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Also, this tree was given no head start and uh, it should ripen very soon here as an in-ground tree that's relatively immature. I should be getting my first fruits off of this, I would say by probably the second or third week in August in the Philadelphia area. And I wanna show you more of my trees because I really do, I have them everywhere, all over the yard and in high quantity. Um, this one here is called Nerino. And again, the fruits are all up and down the branches. It grows really well, although I would say the vigor is about average. It's not uh, the highest vigor plant, but it does grow very tall not necessarily like your long to do, which is very vigorous. This is somewhere about average, if you can kind of compare the height of the trees. But the vigor can really be determined well by the diameter of the wood here, is that the diameter of the wood is really just not that thick. So to me, I think it's somewhere in the average category of vigor. You can see this branch is filled with fruits. This branch is filled with fruits. They're all just covered in fruits. It doesn't need a whole lot of light to set the fruits. Um, so it's more adapted to lower light conditions. It's more adapted to a shorter season climate. And it's adapted to an environment that is quite cold. So it really has a wide range of adaptability to all climates for the most part in this country. You know, if it can be grown here well, it can be grown pretty much anywhere else well except for maybe somewhere very rainy, um, like 
Hawaii, Florida, Louisiana. You know, it's worth trialing, I think, this particular fruit in those climates because I, I mentioned about the hang time, the rain resistance, the split resistance, the spoilage resistance. It's just as good as it gets. Here's another one right next to it. Again, this is also, I believe, Nerino. I have to check the tags to be 100% sure, but it's the same thing. So this one goes by the name Nerino, but it actually is Moro de Caneva, and it's extremely easy to determine to identify this variety because you can see right in here, let's zoom in. is that you have right here where the stem attaches to the neck, you have these two lips. It's like a collar almost. Also, the shape is pretty much unmistakable. I mean, how could you not be able to identify this? But it has that collar to it, and they all pretty much have that collar, you know? There it is right here on this particular fruit. Let me focus the camera. You can see that collar down there. So what's interesting about it is that, you know, it is a commercial variety, by the way. So this one has it all, like it literally does. It has every characteristic you could think of. It's even commercially grown. Um, but because it's such a commercial fig, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's Black Mission, if it's Brown Turkey, if it's Calamurna, if it's the Adriatic, they're just propagated and spread throughout the world a lot more than other figs for that reason. And because of that, it goes by many names. People have just decided to name it some other thing, right? This one here is called uh, Fico Secco, I believe. This one comes from originally Paolo Bologna's collection. So this figs all over Italy by different names. Um, there's another one out there called Nerino, as I mentioned. There's another one out there called Sivarsky. Um, how many of those trees do I have in the ground? I think I've got about six or seven of them. No, I have more than that. I have about almost, I have close to 10 of them in total. Can, you know, if you count the container trees. This one here is called, I think this one is Savarsky, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so this is Savarsky here. And Savarsky is actually from Hungarian. It's a Hungarian origin, but it's the same exact fruit. You could tell, again, there's the shape, but there's also the lip right there when the neck attaches to the stem. So it's a very easily identified fruit. This one's a little bit different, I've noticed, is that the stem seems to be a lot larger right at this particular point, oddly enough. This one is called Narino. So, I don't know, I wouldn't read too much into that thickness right there, but something worth pointing out. So as I said, it's a commercial fig, it's, it's got everything, you can very easily pick it. You picked it without any damage to the fruit whatsoever because it has this long stem. It doesn't detach very easily. It has good resistances to rain. It's short season, it's short season fig. It's hardy, it's productive, it has average vigor. It's just got everything you want. I mean, there's just nothing, I don't know what else there is to say. And I really like the spoilage resistance within it is that it doesn't typically seem to spoil. Even if it were to split or the interior has been exposed to the outside elements, I've seen that through insect damage on this fig, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It continues to ripen without any hitch whatsoever. The bricks in it is high enough. Let's cut it open. Show you guys the inside. Oh yeah. So we've got some ants in here. It is what it is. If you're gonna grow figs at home, you're gonna eat ants. You wanna grow them commercially? Use Tanglefoot. It's that simple. You don't want ants, use Tanglefoot. So there it is. It's really a quality, quality piece of fruit. I think it's beautiful. 
This one here is again shriveling. Let's try it. Give you guys an idea of the flavor. Oh yeah. Very, very good. It is a little bit more refreshing than you might, ex you might imagine. Nice berry flavor. Um, it's fruity, it's figgy. You know, it has like a, a characteristic, I think, similar to maybe something like a Villette de Bordeaux and a Hardy Chicago, something in between those two, perhaps. It's quite dry, it's not very syrupy, it's, uh, it's on the stickier side and the jammier side. So it's not very liquidy or syrupy, you know what I mean? It has a nice, thick, dense pulp to it that is super enjoyable. It's not necessarily on the level of a Col de Dom or something like Smith. Smith's actually very, a very thick fig, but it's very good. And uh, for my money, this is probably, if I had to give it a perfect rating out of, on, out of five, I think it's like a 4.6 out of five. And I'm saying that because this fruit here is on a, a potted tree. Not that that's a bad thing, but the in-ground figs seem to taste a little bit better on this variety. And um, this one was picked a little bit earlier actually than I really, really liked them. So um, you could let them ripen so long and they'll turn into that awesome fig candy that I've described a couple times before to you guys. We talk about Ronde Bardot, we talk about Moro de Caneva. Those are the two that really stick out in my mind because of that spoilage resistance. They're not gonna ferment, they're not gonna split. Um, well, they are gonna split. Ronde Bardot definitely will split, but they're not gonna ferment, they're not gonna mold, they're not gonna spoil because they just have that higher bricks. And if you just let them continue to ripen, they're not really gonna dry up. They're not gonna turn into something you would think of as a dried fig, but they turn into something I consider called fig candy. And it's just mind-blowingly good. It's like a bomb of sugar and flavor that just went off in your mouth. I don't really know how to describe it other than that. It's really an explosion of flavor in your mouth. Um, so yeah, for me, this is like, it is, it is one of the best. I don't care what anybody says. They don't know what they're talking about if they disagree. It can be grown anywhere. This will be in all the nursery catalogs at some point in the future. I will make it a mission of mine to spread this fruit around the world as it already kind of has been. I mean, it's not like I discovered this or anything, but you know, this fig is gonna be around for a very, very long time. It's not going anywhere. It's not a fad. This is just simply one of the best fruits. It also peels pretty well for those of you who don't enjoy the skin. It peels very easily. And there you go. Um, yeah. I love the skin though, by the way. So enjoy this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you for the next one.